So the first of these four design pillars is the question of who do we vote for? Do we vote for individual candidates or do we vote for political parties? It's a pretty fundamental choice. Obviously the systems of proportional representation are based on us voting for political parties. Most of the other electoral systems in the world are based on us voting for individual candidates. The second question is the one of how many candidates appear in each geographical electoral division. The first past the post system and others are based on just one candidate in a system. The proportional systems are based on many. The question is also fairly fundamental to the degree of choice that voters have. Obviously we're very limited if only one candidate for each political party is available. Where more candidates are available, there's a great deal more choice. The third design question is the question of whether we are only able to vote for a single candidate or whether we can list a sequential ranking of candidates. If we do that, it allows various parties to run and not cause a spoiler effect if small parties eventually drop out and the votes cast for them are wasted. The fourth design question is probably the most important. It's the question of whether every vote is equal. There are many different ways of trying to make sure this happens. And down through history, a number of steps were taken to try and ensure that everyone had an equal say. From the Great Reform Act of Britain in 1832, which got rid of heavily malapportioned electoral boundaries, to the invention of the single transferable vote system in the 1850s, which set a specific quota for every seat that was won in Parliament, onto the growth of party proportional systems from about the 1890s onward, and through to the 1960s, where issues of malapportionment and gerrymandering in America and other countries were heavily fought over to try and make sure that some voters were not more equal than others in the way that electoral systems actually worked. 